Yeah. yeah. The officers get yeah. Yeah. Hands. Turn over. Put your, take the bag down. Right, right. Let me take your bag off. Yes. Stay still. Okay. Put hands behind your back. Thank you. Have you seen a child anywhere? Is she on her own? Right. The child's down there. Get down there quick. Yes, it's in my bag. What is? In my bag, ID, everything. What's in your backpack? ID and everything. ID? Yes, and the knife. And a knife. And a knife. Right, the time now is 14.45. Uh, At this moment in time, you're under arrest on suspicion of attempted murder. Uh, you do not have to say anything, but it may be defensive. You do not mention something when questioned that you later align in court, and if you do so, maybe give any evidence. Okay? Your arrest is necessary to protect vulnerable people and to ensure a prompt and effective investigation to this offence. Yeah. Okay. What's your name? El Jonas Corner. El Jonas Corner. Okay. Where do you live? Just confirm to you what's in what's inside your bag. You can control. It's just no no bumps, no nothing. No it's just bumps. my ID card. ID card. In my mom's ID card. Yeah. There is a knife, some water, some juice. Okay. Nothing. Okay, that's it. So there's that's nothing it. nothing Not that's gonna hurt me, bag. no? No. Okay. Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors at Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company, get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Bolton in the north of England. Before we start, I want to pay my respects and tribute to Emily Jones who lost her life on Mother's Day this year in a Bolton park. Today, her murderer has been jailed and police have released CCTV footage of the moments that Altiona Skarna was walking through Bolton before she went to a park and stabbed schoolgirl Emily Jones. The video was shown in court and shows the 30-year-old travelling into Bolton Town Centre before leaving and walking towards Queen's Park. Over the course of a seven day trial, they heard that Skarna had sat on a bench in the park before jumping up and grabbing the youngster as she traveled by on a scooter. She had a craft knife and she used it to cut Emily's throat. The youngster would die around two hours later, despite desperate efforts of paramedics and doctors. The CCTV showed her traveling across a bridge on Trinity Street towards Bolton Town Centre, and the court was told that she went to Victoria Square, where she bought a pack of free craft knives from the pound shop store. One of these would then become her lethal weapon. On the footage, they showed her walk into Crompton Play Shopping Centre and use the toilet before leaving out of Victoria Square. She then went into Poundland and bought a drink before heading towards the park. The last of the footage shows Skarna heading out of the town on Dean's Gate in the direction of Spa Lane. The court heard that Skarna had likely stopped taking her antipsychotic medicine shortly before this happened. Simon Soka, the defending QC, told jurors that a month's worth of pills were found in her home by police after her arrest. Skarner was yesterday given a life sentence with a minimum time of eight years to serve. She will be sent to a hospital originally and then to prison if she gets better. So this definitely raises questions on what mental health workers do in order to ensure that people with severe mental health conditions take the medication. She was a paranoid schizophrenic and she clearly wasn't getting the help and the support that she needed. She initially fled the scene after killing her but she was chased down by Tony Canty, a bystander who was walking in the park with his wife. He waited until police arrived and arrested her. And when they did arrest her, she was yards away from a small baby in a pushchair that I noticed. The footage shows the police approaching her on the playground and she's asked what she has in her bag and she answers it very calmly and then gets into the van and answers more questions. And for this to have happened on Mother's Day just adds to the extra 
trauma and pain that the family went through. There's no real answers, and I don't think there ever will be in relation to why it happened. In the family statement, they said that Emily was bright and funny and that she was a kind child without a mean bone in her body. How can we put into words how we feel about the death of our only child? Her father said, it's just too hard to comprehend. Emily was the beating heart of us all, the spring in our step, the reason we got up in the morning. During the trial, the court heard that Mr. Jones had run to his daughter and held her while paramedics tried to stop the bleeding that she was suffering from. In a statement read in court, it said that Emily was a vulnerable child full of innocence and wonder. She was starting off on her own path in life and her future was cut short. Our future has been taken away, he said, and how can we enjoy the best part that has been taken away? Mr. Jones went on to make the plea in court. The loss of Emily has been profound and a significant impact, not just on the family, but the whole community. She was a school friend, a playmate, a granddaughter and a niece, and she meant different things to every single one of us. And they cannot understand why this happened. So it's a really devastating story to come from Bolton. And our thoughts must be with the family at this terrible time. Please pay respects in the comments as well. And also any suggestions or experiences you have yourself with mental health. And more that can be done in the community to ensure that this doesn't happen again. I really appreciate you joining me today. Rest in peace to Emily Jones. Peace.